I know City Council voted, so I'm now the, the chairman of the committee. Um, we're not going to do things significantly different than we did before. Most of the work items are still going to be Chris, I think, as we go forward. On the probably the next couple of months, we do a lot of work on the plan. I'll be doing a lot more active discussions. Um, so we start with public comment. There. Hello, my name is Adele Franks. I live in Florence, and uh, <laughs> because of the government, the governor, the mayor's um, administrative order, that was called. <laughs> um, I thought, what a great opportunity to introduce the concept of some uh, systematic change in this meeting. So I thought of that I, I would propose that. Um, I've heard about other uh, cities that start their meetings with uh, uh, updates of, of major projects. And there are a lot of major projects from that I know about um, in Northampton. And I think it would be really wonderful for the commissioners to all have updates every month. And also it would be really helpful for the public to have updates every month. So I thought I would propose that at every one of your monthly meetings you start out with an update. And the projects that I know about, and I'm sure that there are many more than that, are the uh, 2014 grant that we got for $525,000 for uh, solar array and battery backup at the fire department. And then there was the 2015 $3 million grant uh, for a microgrid development. Um, there's ongoing discussion about school rooftops and engineering studies to see which schools are actually have rooftops that could hold solar. And um, I, I think it'd be really helpful to have an update from uh, uh, about that. And there's um, in the uh, climate resilience draft study, there's a mention of an internal study that was begun in 2012 to assess grid resilience in Northampton. I have no idea if that study was ever finished, but it would, just, it would be really nice to have updates about that. And then, of course, there's the roundhouse parking lot effort to redo the parking lot and put up solar canopies. And um, I would love to know the status of that. And I imagine other commissioners, the commissioners who are around this room, would also benefit from hearing updates. So that's my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Another public comment? Hey, folks. Lily Lombard, Monroe Street. Um, I also wanted to comment on the, um, the mayoral administrative code change that was voted in by city council. Uh, many of you may know that I was fairly vocal in opposition of that um, because I like to see leadership um, bubble up organically in a, in a, in a, in a group. But um, I also firmly believe that when decisions are made over which you have no control, you do nothing but move forward. Um, wholeheartedly so Wayne congratulations for being chair and I also wanted to propose that this is a, an opportunity for um, doing some big picture thinking about this um, commission especially because uh, last meeting ushered in uh, a new level of energy and engagement among commissioners and I think that's a really wonderful thing and that also included engagement um, among members of the public who will be probably here a lot more regularly um, so uh, I wanted to offer a few suggestions that I found helpful as a chair of the commission in Northampton. One is that we, um, we meet for a longer period of time. We actually meet more frequently too, twice as frequently and from between one and a half to two hours. The scope of this um, commission is so grand that it strikes me that one and a half hours a month is not sufficient to do the kind of deliberation you need to do. So I offer that as a suggestion. I also offer the suggestion of putting time limits on every agenda item so that you make sure that you get through the agenda. Um, I know I have come to two meetings where I expected to, um, to either be part of an agenda or I was, um, I was an agenda item on the meeting, um, which never happened another time where I was very interested in a subject matter that never came up that was on the agenda. So I offer those two suggestions um, for your consideration. Thank you. Other comments? Great, thank you. Um, so, does anyone have any comments or want to make a motion on the minutes to the last meeting? Number 27. Uh, move to approve the minutes, please. A second. I have two second. comments. Um, I think there was a typo. The, the second public comment was 
Sunrise Movement? No, no, I got the Sunrise Movement. Wayne was the person who spoke and said her name was Wayne. Oh, okay. That's my... Okay, that's I, right. I, I didn't see Sunrise in there listed as Polka, but I, maybe I just... Mm -hmm. so. Oh, wait, Sunrise. No, I thought you did too. I thought you had Sunrise, but I don't see it. Well, they, the young people didn't get them. They were referenced down somewhere else in the I know they did. minutes, but they're... Well, it is a. Okay. How did I miss oh, here it is. No cases of the Northampton Mayor's Youth Commission oh, and representatives go. of the Sunrise Movement. Okay. Um, I, I named as many as I could. Okay. Um, I, I also um, thought it was peculiar that Gordon was missing from the minutes altogether. Towards, towards that, I would um, suggest that we edit the minutes. Uh, for, number one, we will we'll spell Gordon's name correctly. <laughs> under Climate Resilience Regeneration Plan, but I suggest you say Gordon on behalf of at the beginning of that paragraph. And then basically Gordon on behalf of the next small group. And then the rest of that paragraph, because it's basically what he was saying. Was there also something that Ashley said there as well? Was Wait. there something that Ashley, did you make, you made an opening statement last time, didn't you? Um, is that reflected in the minutes? I don't see it. I mean, I, my sense of the minutes has always been trying to get this, the gist of the conversation to make sure we have the points down. What the, the kind of so. No where you can sit in this entire room where you see everybody. So Ashley, do, do, do you Thank you. Uh, have those comments that you spoke about that you did to write Yeah, that's yeah. the introduction that we adopted. I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. The, the minutes reflect a lot of back and forth between different commissioners. Yeah. As I was yeah. that you there, uh, there did seem to be a number of times I spoke throughout the meeting. Uh, and yeah, I, 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 and I, I don't, I, you have a very difficult job, and I'm, yes. this is not a reflection on <laughs> I just, there was a I'm lot happening at that meeting, but I think just inserting his name as a presence and a contributor, I think that's what I'm I am comfortable with uh, Chris's suggested okay. amendment to the beginning that uh, my name be stated and then on behalf of our group and then I made an additional statement, although I had, I believe at the time, said that that statement was on my own behalf. Uh, yeah, I, I, got, I got the edit that I would suggest. Is that good enough for I'm you? Okay. That? I'm okay with that. The motion would it take amendments to it? It's, uh, yeah, as amended. I'll, those are all amendments. Any other comments before I go? Great. Anyone in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Administrative pro changes, Chris. Um, okay, so um, Wayne has already announced the primary change in the administrative code, but I thought I would just read it because there were some other small changes. So I'm just going to reread it so everybody kind of knows what our administrative code is. So, there shall be an Energy Sustainability Commission consisting of 11 members as follows. Director of Central Services, or their designee. Director of Public Works, or their designee. Director of Planning and Sustainability, or their designee. Building Commissioner, or their designee. Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School Facilities Director, or their designee. Two elected officials and four members of the public. The Director of Planning and Sustainability shall serve as Chair, and the Director of Central Services shall serve as Vice Chair. The Energy and Sustainability Officer shall serve as staff advisor to the Commission. So that's it right now. So the only other big change, quite frankly, was um, Swiss Vocational used to be the superintendent uh, or his or their designee, and now is the facilities director, the Swiss Vocational, and their designee. So just to bring everybody up to date, that's where it stands now. Uh, I would just ask, can that person identify them? Who is the central services? That's you. All right. <laughs> what, I'm Gordon. What's your name? Dave Palmer. Dave Palmer. Pleasure. Okay, thank you. Okay, and I don't know, Wayne, if you want to say anything about. Oh, you already. Yeah, okay. So, okay. next thing, Chris, also, what the group's opening. Oh, right, okay. Um, so, um, as, as asked of last time, um, uh, I approached uh, the city solicitor, Alan Seawald, and um, on here's what I heard back. So, uh, subgroups, as were formed, the group subgroups, <laughs> Should be referred to as subcommittees, so just you know, now we call them subcommittees, not subgroups, um, not working groups. 
the subcommittees have to compile, uh, have to comply with open meeting law in every way. So you have to post agendas, meet quorum requirements, etc. And every every way you have to meet an open meeting requirement for the full commission, the subcommittee of it has to meet the same requirements. Um, quorum for subcommittee is the majority of that subcommittee. So if you have a subcommittee of three, quorum is two. Um, only nest commissioners can be part of the subcommittee. Um, uh, since uh, members of the nest were affirmed by central uh, by city council, you can't add new uh, new members via a subcommittee. So subcommittees can only do that. Subcommittees can, as any other open meeting uh, situation, can consult with and or receive advice from non-commissioned members. Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, so subcommittees, you know, as we do here with open meeting comments, um, can also receive. Uh, you know, counsel and receive advice from non-commissioned members. Uh, they're not just part of it. They're not part of that. So, uh, yeah, so, you know. so that's a that's a report back. Okay, yeah, do that. I mean, uh, because we ran into this with the youth commission as well. That also includes things like working on Doodle. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Google Docs, Google Docs, Google Documents. Those are not public, and if you're if the subcommittee is working on a Google Doc together, that's actually a violation of open meeting law. Um, it's frustrating, it's maddening actually at times because it, it really kind of limits your ability to use something that actually provides great facility. The purpose and intent of open meeting law is that the public have every opportunity to know what's being discussed and how it's being discussed. And so, um, that's why you have to stick to the agenda. You can't waver from the agenda because even, no matter how pertinent it is, you can list it as new business and come up as possible to address it as such. But it's so that with enough notification, the public has an opportunity to, to hear the item being discussed. It's addressed in the agenda, but not other things. So, um, can you have remote meetings if they're publicly? You can, the public? there are, we did approve. We required approval, so the, the uh, master in law requires approval of the council to authorize remote participation, and you can, but only one person, I think, at a time. You can't have multiples, you can't all assemble in a, a remote. I mean, we could have three disembodied heads is one of the things I suggested here, but no, we're not there yet, apparently. So we could have one person on a screen or via a phone remote. You can't post a meeting a subcommittee is holding that's on a public server and you post a public listing. Right, no, that unfortunately, no, Massachusetts has not addressed that yet. That's You're really right, important. so doing, yeah, doing basically a cyber version of public meeting, the other argument is not everyone has access to the internet. That's part of, that's why the, the Attorney General's office has been uh, we're lucky. It changes every year, the mass open meeting law, but it tends to get stricter and stricter. It has not become more open each time. It, it, every new um, notice from them becomes the issue. For instance, the issue of quorum. Um, if you have a three member subcommittee, as Chris pointed out, two is, is, is quorum. So if they talk about anything relative to their subcommittee, they, cannot, they can't do it. They have to do it in public meeting. Um, it, it, it counts as deliberating and in, in, in camera. So, and so as, as far as meeting um, uh, remotely, my understanding is you have to have a quorum present. You have to have a quorum present, and then you have to vote to decide whether that person can participate remotely. Okay. If there was not a quorum, say we set up a seven member subcommittee, which would require four people as a quorum, and three of them ran into each other. You can do, you can. The tricky part, the other issue is email. <laughs> but yes, you could do that as long as they don't. You, there's also a called serial violation of quorum. Mm -hmm. So if four of those members talk and then talk to other members subsequent to that, that's a violation as well. Same thing happens with an email. If you send an email and everyone just is on a chain of emails, but they're still communicating, that's still a violation. Mm -hmm. So, it, yeah, usually the best rule is if you think it might possibly even remotely violate it, it does. In all <laughs> so, so, what we had proposed, was there someone else We had proposed working groups that were led by one NESC 
commissioner, and then um, non-members. So, I mean, if we just had subcommittees that were one member, and then we sought advice from the public, like, where, well, like how do you define counsel and advice from non-members? Like, where, what is crossing that line? You can, no. Most advice is not just a matter of it has to be posted. You have to have an agenda in a public space and do minutes. So that okay. there's no problem with doing one person or nine people, whatever it is. You just have to go through that public process. And actually, if it's just you talking to someone else, yeah. I mean, correct me, I don't that's think not that's fine. not a problem at right. all. Right, so and I'm just saying, so my point is, it seems like what we proposed can work within the constraints of public meeting law. <clears throat> yeah, if one, if one commissioner is at all meetings, with other people, then you're not really having a commission meeting. Right, and what we had proposed were working groups that were led by members of the commission, one for waste, one for energy transition. So we post it just seems to me that the, the, the difficulty is in how do you translate a conversation that you and a bunch of other people have into something that is brought to the committee and has some sort of potency. Has, has, has something is is something that can be recommended. I, I, like that I mean, seems like a process that's difficult. Meetings no, no, to we, different working groups. Uh, I wonder if uh, okay. there has been a fundamental change to the structure of this commission uh, due to. Uh, Wayne being appointed our chair and having the, the uh, head of the grounds, uh, I apologize for getting your title incorrectly, but the head of public works. Um, and, I, and I think that our desire as a commission is to be able to give feedback and make input on these plans, which your department is responsible for, as far as I understand, in creating. And I would wonder, what would be the best way, in your opinion, Wayne, for us to get you that feedback to help you make the changes that we feel are necessary in the plan for it to really truly represent the goals of this commission and the community? Uh, how can we do that best so, for you? So this one to make the next agenda item. So I might just move on to that next piece. So um, what I have, I'm going to pass this out, and we give a quick intro first. I, I want to step back, so sort of ignore the plan for now. We'll come back to the plan, but the plan's a lot of pros. You know, it was done by our consultant. It was never intended to be sort of a final document. It was to start the conversation. And given sort of all the comments people have, it seems like it's worth stepping back and figure out what, what are the areas of agreement, what are the areas of disagreement, what are the areas we need to work deeper into the weeds. So I came through a series of sort of decision points. And, and they're sort of implied, and here's where I think we're going, but it makes sense to go through each of them so it addresses both what Gordon's saying in terms of the process and then some of the substance pieces. So it makes sense to work through these now, future meetings, you know, as much time as it takes, and hopefully that then comes out and we can figure out what's the process for that. You just take one and pass the line in your direction, and this extra copy is when it gets to Chris for people in the audience. Sorry. I'm not sure it's enough for everybody, but you guys can share. Um, so I just broke this up. The order doesn't really matter. I, I put this in the order that I think makes sense to have a conversation, but we can certainly do it in some other order that makes sense. Um, just sort of very quickly, you know, it seemed like, I, I think one reason, a couple people said that they didn't align to all the combination of the last meeting, and I think one reason is that I don't, I'm not sure everyone gets doing a lot of traveling, doing a lot of projects in other communities, is the level of agreement here is pretty astonishing, right? So it's probably disagreement should be carbon neutral by 2050 or should be carbon neutral by 2040 or whatever the dates are. But, you know, I go to places where, you know, the president thinks we should burn more coal. I don't think, I haven't heard of it, but I'm thinking that maybe thinks we should burn So for the most part, I think sort of stepping back, I think it becomes easier to figure out the decision. So let me start with the process. And the process, that the way it's here, is what we've done for other similar plans. And so there's some assumption we're doing a similar thing other times. So this is what we do for our open space and recreation plan, what we did for the Walk Bike Northampton plan, um, what we did for Sustainable Northampton with different committees. 
so let's go through these, and then that comes back to Gordon's question of exactly what's the way to get input in the process. So we hired a consultant. The consultant's job was to do public process, to reach out to frontline communities, you know, this basically social equity, uh, and to give us a draft. And then, you know, in July or August, we came here with a draft, and we're looking for recommendations from you all. That's sort of where we are now. Um, the normal process would be after we get that, staff does revisions, we work with the planning board, since the planning board is ultimately the approval authority for a public hearing, staff does revisions based on direction, you guys get final recommendations, planning board, you know, etc. I'm not going to read this all to you. Um, so, it, and at the last conversation, I think there's a lot of interest in these working groups, and I certainly am a believer in the working groups. But part of the conversation was, does it make sense to stop the plan? Or if we go forward in the plan and the working groups, let us get deeper in the weeds in the work program. So I wrote this in the order of what at least, frankly, I'm advocating for is, let's not stop the plan from going forward and creating a framework while the working groups go forward and do it. And so that's a question. Yeah, of course. So the plan, the work groups, and the, that's down in the dark chain of substantive actions. That's related to in the plan is presented, the focus areas. I, yes, I, I think that's one of the things we have to do is how much details do we want in the actions in the plan and how much is sort of working plan later. There's not a, a clear line, so when we get to that, I want to follow through on that more. But yes, that's the idea of the working groups, as I understand. Well, you know, it's kind of confusing looking at the structures. You presented a plan that had these specific target action items that we all dug into and responded yeah. to, and now you're stepping, stepping out a big way again. Basically, well, I think that's probably to redefining the priorities, even though we've been presented priorities. And we basically said, you know, bucket wise, those were great yeah. big picture. Like, I think there was a lot of agreement that, you know, those key, I forget how many there were, but. Yeah. I don't, many of the magic to how much we get into the weeds and substance, I think the short answer, at least the way I'm proposing it, is the areas which we can easily reach consensus and have enough information is what we should include in the plan. Mm -hmm. The areas which require more work either because it's disagreement or because we nor need more research okay. is the things we should put up And where that line is, I think we all get to collectively decide. So where do the, so we will define as a group what are we in agreement of going forward right. and what needs more work. Right, but, but the, the part I want to be clear, and this is the part I think that's critical, is this is sort of a consensus building operation. And so, like it or not, the way the city works in these plans is almost everybody gets a veto. It's not going to move forward unless this committee is comfortable. But if you propose things, the planning board's not comfortable, it's not going to move forward mm -hmm. either. And so that's, and that of necessity, I don't want to say we want to keep it stupid, but that's of necessity means we're looking for what's the common ground so we can make advances in those areas. And then we get deeper in the weeds and build consensus there. So it's the planning board, the council, and us. Yes, right. Well, administration as well. And the mayor, you know, a lot of these things are going to be things for the mayor. And so the mayor and the conservation with the department is going to make a lot of decisions too. So. When you do, I think that um, it makes me feel a little bit defensive when you say we'll drop things out of it or you know, move the thing forward. I feel like um, that position that you've kind of staked that position for a few months and I was prepared four months ago to give my feedback that I wanted to see incorporated into the plan and if you had, and I feel like we were kind of blocked from doing that and then we put forward our suggestions and we still haven't seen those suggestions integrated into the plan and, and that be revised and I feel like if four months ago you had said okay thank you for your comments gone and revised it and brought it back to us we probably would have been passing the plan today yeah I don't know I mean I, I, I I'm not sure that's true I think from my standpoint um, you know, there's a lot in the plan to dislike when someone else was defending the plan, particularly yeah. on the um, resiliency adaptation side. I think they were stronger, you know, or resiliency mitigation side. I think they were stronger on the, you know, a lot of adaptation. Um, but, you know, so I, I don't want to go back there. I, I think we could probably right. disagree, but I think as we got deeper in the weeds in some things, the consensus was full on the point. And so in some ways, stepping back, 
is, is how we're trying to build consensus. Yeah, and, and I actually, I completely agree, and, I, and I, I, um, I actually love how you've broken this out, and this dramatically simplifies the process for it, so thank you for doing this work. Um, I am concerned that you then suggested that we, and I may just be totally misinterpreting what you're saying. What I would hope that what you're saying is that we will examine as a group all of these different things, find the places where we actually have consensus. That's exactly right. Um, and then you would suggest, before we move the entire thing forward, that you would suggest an alternate path for those things that we don't have consensus on yes. yet, so that the commission can feel comfortable that just because we didn't reach consensus uh, doesn't mean that those things could be abandoned <coughs> for an indefinite period of time. Absolutely, I agree. Yeah. And that's what you see under item whatever it is on here, um, sort of the, the work, did I this out? I apologize, so this is supposed to include the work, oh, it is there. So the, the, the number nine, the first number nine, um, is that sort of what I was thinking about the work group pieces. It doesn't mean these things can't be going concurrently. Okay. That. And, and to be clear, I think this committee gets a choice of one or two things. In terms of the overall plan, which is adopted by the planning board, that's gonna be a consensus operation. In terms of what this committee does is, you know, after we do the plan, there's sort of two ways to do it. One is we can build towards detailed work plans that will build consensus, the same sort of thing, or you can certainly issue your own report that's advisory. So how, you know, you get to decide how much of an advocacy group you want to be versus how much of a consensus building piece. You know, as a planner, my job is to find plans that we can implement. You know, so quick background, we did exactly the same thing for the Sustainable North Hampton Plan. What came out of the Sustainable North Hampton Plan was this committee. There had been an earlier incarnation had been killed by a previous mayor. This committee came out of that process. Chris's position came out of that process. Again, there had been an energy officer years before. A lot of zoning change, a lot of different things came out. And so to me, and again, I, I'm a pragmatist by nature. I want to find the compromises. Mm -hmm. It's not the only way to do it. But to me, the consensus approach makes sense. But clearly, I mean, the Sunrise Movement has been very effective, and they're sort of saying we want to be an advocacy group and not the consensus. So they both have roles. Ben? I just want to ask a question, I, and I realize maybe I'm just dumb on this, but I'm trying to figure out what what does the plan do? Like, what's what it, when we you know it's, we find we get to consensus and we yeah. have a plan, as opposed to I mean, if it, we don't pass rules. <laughs> we don't make policy, but we can make recommendations. That's that's what we can do, right? Yeah. So, so, so let me give you examples, okay? And I'll give you examples of two different scales. So at the big picture scale, you know, one of the recommendations in here, again, may not go anywhere, but one of the recommendations is that departments start getting carbon budgets. Um, and they say how much carbon they're allowed to, to produce. Um, the mayor's not going to start, he may never do that. So, the, the so this not is essentially start. a recommendation to the mayor. That and, particular one, well, and he could, he and the city council could pick items and, and turn them into actual policy. Absolutely. I but you could make recommendations well, in other forms. I think you need to say community because the mayors and the council are just sort of the representatives of the community um, in in a in a way that this com this commission is also represent the community, but not at the level that, that elected officials are. And again, you know, I, I'm a pragmatist, so this, I, I know there's different ways to do it, but to me, that's the consensus building piece. The more, you know, the, the previous mayor didn't want to create this committee until it was a plan to create a, a clear blueprint, and as soon as that plan happened, she created a committee. I, so to me, the consensus makes it, I mean, city council can vote against things in the future, the mayor can veto things, Planning board cannot adopt things, but the more this consensus, the more it creates that inevitability, and I think the more likely it gets done. So just if I can speak to that, that the, um, yeah, so it's not an edict, and it's for fiat. It's actually it is, but it does inform every aspect of debate going forward. Now we we have a new council that's coming, so fifty percent of the council, um, based on. What I saw during the campaign, so I, I would feel optimistic if I were members of this committee by the process. But the fact is, there's a reference point. This serves as a, a, a touchstone, if you will, for the council as we figure out legislation. We also use it to reinforce our arguments in debate. 
um, what Council Klein wants to argue for, uh, you know, pesticide management. You can invoke that this plan that was developed by consensus, and that's the that's the leverage point because you are, you know, we often say we speak the will of the people. We have no idea how to define what the will of the people is until we get enough cranky phone calls. But the fact is, is that we have a plan that was developed by the people that helps. For the mayor's side, which is the other side, develops policy for his department heads to enact. So based, and he has a predicate plan for, for a reference point, um, as opposed to him just saying, I just read this really cool article, I think I'll do this. So this is, the whole idea is to, as Wayne said, it's to readjust, realign the culture, and also provide as a reinforcement tool. So it's, it's not a, a, a Panacea. It's why it has its built-in flexibility because it really does. It def it's the cultural definition point for us. But let me add one thing too. This this goes back two years because my office is the one who initiated this whole plan. And basically, we said, look, Chris can go to lots of conferences and talk really well about all the amazing things Northampton's doing. I can go to lots of conferences and do it, but there's a certain feeling that it's sort of scattershot. We throw things against the wall and see what sticks, and we're we're leading. I think we're leading the country in some ways, but we don't really have a clear framework. And so the mayor wants this plan because he wants that framework, which means many of the things in the framework, I think, are going to sit. Not everything will sit. Just uh, to your, just so that I'm clarifying my own vision of how you see, see this working through with us, um, there seems to be two different inflection points in here where we can uh, help to shape the plan. Uh, which is the, the first one being now at the you know, step number six and then again at step number nine. So do you see us working together right now, and I would like to start doing this right now, at number six to find the places where we have consensus and then to address the things that we do not have current consensus on during step nine? Well, actually, say, yeah, but I would say you get three cracks right now you're step two. Right, so some step of us missed the first step. Right, but this is yeah. still part of step two. Yeah. We, haven't, we haven't completed step two. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry? So we're still at step number two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I thought we were at six. No, no, no. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. I mean, it moves faster. Don't don't think these are equally sequential steps. But yeah, okay. Um, okay. So we have three three different. Cra I I mean, I think that that's a very good way of doing okay. it. Um, I do think that we'll need to. It sounds to me like setting up subcommittees may be fairly difficult. We might kind of of our own volition look at this places and this. I'm, I'm, I'm putting this out for discussion take a look at the spaces where we feel individually that we have a good understanding of what is being recommended and bring our own recommendations on each of those individual pieces as to language that could be put in there and then go through them one by one in this committee setting maybe a three minute time limit on each one through the next couple meetings and get our way through all of those comments and then we we could move move to the next step. Yeah, thank you. Sir. Would it be true that basically so so let's say Gordon is focused on a particular set set of questions and as long as he doesn't meet with any of us and he can call in all the all the experts and the people who have ideas and he can talk with them and he can bring to us his findings or his ideas and then we all discuss them here. Yes. So besides the open meeting to each other, sorry, I'm just no, you really not. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. the you know besides the open meeting stuff with which Chris is talking about, there are committees in town that are quasi judicial and committees that are legislative. And from a legal standpoint, you're a legislative. Quasi judicial committee shouldn't be talking to anybody, right? Because they're judges. But as individuals, you can talk to whomever you want and, and get your ideas, and the deliberation should take place here or some other advertised meeting. But this, I think, goes back to Lily's point about how often we meet. I mean, in some ways, we should just figure out enough time to do it, have those conversations. And maybe the three minutes the court has taken is we figure out, is there consensus? That should go forward. If it's not, that maybe some, because again, what, what goes in the substantive actions, to some extent, that's the stuff that we could build consensus on. 
So it doesn't necessarily mean that every good idea will make it. It's the good ideas we all agree make it now. The great ideas that we're not quite ready for prime time, we discuss later. Um, and and in something, just two other things. Um, it's not that I don't know how to count. The reason there's three nines in a row <laughs> is those things can be happening concurrently. Right. We have to block grant consolidated plan that has to be in effect by July. We have to do a resiliency and hazard mitigation plan that has to be in effect by August. The same thing goes in putting these groups under number nine, that's sort of random. It can start tomorrow going forward. The only thing the only thing that makes me nervous is I don't want to delay building consensus here. So anything extra we do towards those groups, it's not like you have to wait for that process before you start. So just for Clarity. We are none of us are allowed to talk to each other about what we're doing individually. So you can't form a subcommittee, and even a working group is a subcommittee. That's what Alan's saying, say solicitor. You can talk to somebody else as long as you it's not playing a game that you don't talk to Ben and then Ben talks okay. to somebody else. But yeah, you can talk so to somebody else. Right, because he's a building yeah, right. no problem. He's with got that. expertise that I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah sections of the plan would be very useful for but in fact when you three guys and Ashley met, you still weren't in violation. Okay. You weren't in violation because it was under a form. Right. Um, as you drafted uh, the, uh, your report. I, I think that's what the line was. If the four of you met for beer and you were informing each other, that's fine. As soon as you become sort of a working group that's reporting yeah. back, well, that was it's the thing like was, it was not a designated working group. It's true, it does get tricky, but you guys were not an officially recognized subgroup of this committee. You were convening because you had a shared interest that you were advancing, but it was close. Yeah, it yeah. was close. No, Alan, Alan actually would have. We can steer clear. Alan, Alan actually, to that. Yeah, Alan said that the, the sub the subcommittee that met violated the meeting. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think it, I think you're actually probably right. Just the, the deliberative, the, you know, the state purpose right. to do it probably is what I don't know. I can't speak for Alan. Right. So. To Gordon's point of moving forward, let me start with the process, and I really want to talk more about the substance, but any changes to the order that concern people? Again, maybe that the first number nine is spread out longer, but. Wait, can I just say a few things? Just, um, I just want to make sure uh, it's clear, you know, my understanding is that the time frame for this is basically however long we want to take, with the preference being ASAP, and the reason why the ASAP part, in my opinion, so I mean, so there's a vision, there's pathways, and then there's actions. And it strikes me that the vision is probably something that you absolutely need before consensus on before you go to city council. I mean, yes, I, yeah. I, where I thought, the only place where I heard, and you all can disagree, where I heard the vision breaking down was in assigning years. I didn't yeah. hear any disagreement about what we all wanted. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying there, there is agreement yeah. or not. I'm just basically saying, so the vision and probably the pathways you probably want to be pretty darn clear on before yes, you go absolutely. to the council. Yeah. Right, so, so it's like if we concentrate on those aspects first, then what you can get is you can get city council pass something that's a very visionary guiding document, and then it comes back to us and we can start filling in the details. That's exactly right. right. Okay. And this can take as long as we want or as short as we want, as long as, as short as we can make it. It's right. a little bit what the point of our, what we got adopted last meeting, what we voted to approve, was mm -hmm. basically saying, here's a revised vision, and we need to dig deeper. Mm -hmm. That one pager. Yeah. Essentially it's, it's, what it's, that was. Right. It's, it's so was, yeah. and just to add to what you said, there, there was also some disagreement or discussion around the importance of metrics and accountability relating to the vision. You know, what are we trying to achieve? Under what metric and how we can get there? Right, and that may be something we just have to put off because that's going to take a longer time. Or we don't have to put off for the slow time process. So we need to acknowledge how, like what time frame to establish yeah. these metrics, or at what, at what level of focus. And at what resources can we get? Because some of those metrics just take more resources yeah. than we have. So, yeah. Is it one thing that we ran into when we were looking at how to revise the plan was the fact that we don't have a soft copy of the plan. Is that something that we can have so that it makes it possible for us to edit within the document? Wouldn't it be a soft copy of paper? I mean, a, a, a soft, yeah, like a, 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 a copy that's not locked. What I mean it's locked is an InDesign. I mean, you can, you can always edit a PDF. So yes, but you can either have the InDesign files or the PDF files. We don't have it in Word, so we don't have it in Word. Right. We can't have a working document that we're all 
working on something. Okay. But you can use, I mean, if you have Adobe Pro, you can use PDF, PDF. and edit it, or if you know InDesign, you can do it. Um, we can take PDF and convert it to Word, it becomes a messy conversion. I mean, everybody we have, you're welcome to. <coughs> okay, so yeah, that would be, I think, maybe useful to provide uh, a PDF version of it. Yeah, it's easy after. I can send you a file. You can send me the file. Or yeah, and that, that would allow us to edit it. Um, I would, I would think that if we had two meetings, so two months worth of all of us working on providing language feedback for the sections that we all want to see the change in uh, and that we we, st we start in the next meeting to actually review those as they're coming in with you know a cutoff date of additional comments after two and maybe a cutoff debate on all of them after the third one that seems to me as a reasonable amount of time to edit a document like this and I would just Suggest that as a point of conversation. But um, there is now uh, Lisa will not be here. Uh, our term ends soon at the end of this month. Uh, Lisa will be transitioning to a, great, a better place. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if I'm actually going to be assigned this. Mm -hmm. There may be two completely different um, elected officials. That should not preclude or exclude debate or discussion. In fact, I was, obviously we're not the big brains on this part. So, um, and in fact, actually we'll be serving, you know, we're basically the liaisons or whoever, whatever councils will be the liaisons, will at least hopefully be able to assimilate it enough to interpret it as it comes to fourth council to discuss. That's, that's essentially our purpose here. And so, but just to give you a heads up, neither of us might be here, so we don't, well I know for sure, at least will probably show up as a citizen. I don't want to speak for her, as much although as I am. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, does anybody else have a feeling on on that time? So, so it's one of the decision points just to think about. So you know, U.S. The last meeting is staff willing to revise the plan yeah. based on things. So this is sort of the other decision point. So. I sort of looked at it, so I, I had an intern compile all the comments we got basically in an individual sheet so we can start looking at, you know, we got, I'm making up you know, 15 comments on 15 different groups, and sort of then step back and said, it's a waste of time, to at least from my standpoint, to start revising the text until we reach an agreement on these things. Mm -hmm. So one approach is to build these things together, and then staff is happy to take all the comments, what you guys say, what we get from other people, and revise the draft, but that means you're not going to get a clean version until we do a couple meetings. Or you guys can start making comments. I don't really care, but we should have one version. We, we should, do you want to wait till staff revises that draft and then work on the draft, or do you want to go at it now? I don't really care. It seems like what Wayne's suggesting stepping back a little bit, not not digging into what's already presented, but stepping, stepping back with a vision and then agreeing on priorities. That seems more complicated. It's easier for me because always we're stuck in the weeds. We're, we're all going to, if we take the existing plan, again, I'm not defending the plan. It's strong in some points, it's weak in other points, and we can easily rip it to shreds. If we have sort of the design principles we all agree on, then hopefully drafting plan becomes easier. I, I, I want to, I mean, I, I'm see, imagining this thing just kind of churning around forever. And I feel like it, your basic conception of, well, there's a bunch of stuff we all can agree on, so let's just agree on that stuff and get it out of the way. I'd like to come with a process so that at least by next meeting, we have a whole bunch of decision items that we can, you know, somewhere, at least where you suspect, based on your comments, the comments you've seen, you know that we can kind of get them out of the way so that we can start <laughs> narrowing down on some things we really have potential conflicts about what we really want to discuss so that we can come kind of prepared to, next time. To that end, so that, does it make sense? We have 45 minutes before we have to end and we have a hard stop because there's another committee coming in. Um, does it make sense to look through the three items in green, the top, the top three in green, and just go through that and see where the things we can just check off and agree, where the things we need to think and ponder before the next meeting, and that might make it easier for you. 
I don't think that there's a whole lot of language. And I keep feeling like we're just voting on pieces. Are we? Are we talking about voting on pieces of it the way it is to move it forward? Because that I'm uncomfortable with. We're just discussing these priorities laid out and seeing what we're totally in line with and where there's more things we can fit in by just actually getting into it. Sorry. Okay. Um, I, sorry I came in late, so this might have been discussed already. But um, if we, we're kind of agreeing in this committee to work together on this plan, we're moving away from, it sounds like, the work group model because of the difficulties of that. Why can't this committee meet more frequently and serve as, you know, you do these community charrettes all the time where and you did that to, to put together what we already have. Why not bring that model to this committee and have this committee break down the plan and each time we meet, or you meet, I should say. So let's say you meet every two weeks. Every two weeks, you tackle another piece. You do it in that charrette style where there's you know, some kind of, um, you know, you're so good at doing this kind of stuff, Wayne, creating um, the, the, the main points and then having kind of the, the feedback and have the arguments here and really work things out the way that these guys envisioned would be done in work groups, but do it with this committee. And just, you know, plan for six months to just break it down and tackle each of these until at the end of each meeting you have one of the sections kind of tackled. And um, one other thing I want to say, just um, to make sure that I have a chance to say it, and it's kind of my swan song statement with regard to this plan before I leave this committee, is I really want to emphasize something that I touched on last meeting, which is please figure out how you can, as much as possible, have kind of a column for every single um, actionable piece of this that looks at where, um, you know, where's the nexus? Where, where can you get the most bang for your buck in terms of making something happen? And I, I'm really, my, my kind of um, final thing as I'm leaving the council is I really want to encourage this community and the city councilors and the city councilors coming in to really embrace their power and to work with this committee to figure out which of these items are things that are legislative pieces. This isn't just an executive document. This isn't just the mayor telling departments how to do things. We need to codify a lot of this so that we're sure that it's gonna get done. I know that Councilor Dwight always says, Oh, but if you codify something and then you don't achieve it, you're breaking the law, essentially. But there are many pieces in here that I identified when I read the plan, the original plan, that are codifiable, and it's important to codify them. And again, you know, not to, to tout this piece that I've been working on for several years, but I think it is an example, given the, the pesticide transition to organics, essentially, that was something that needed codification to make sure that moving forward, you know, we're adhering to that in the city. So I, I really want to encourage this committee as you're working the plan, whatever way you decide to work it, that you think very clearly about what is executive kind of policy that the, the mayor kind of tells departments how to do it, but there's also the legislative branch that can essentially set policy for it what branch of government oversees it or codifies it or creates it as executive policy. Chris, I'm, I'm wondering if um, all the feedback that we've gotten so far, which you say you know, it's not worth working in until you get, but I'm wondering if, can you use that to actually identify where there is so far probably consensus? Basically, parts of the report that no one commented on <laughs> are, are probably areas where we all kind of agree. And if we have, if you can bring that to us next time, then it may be that we can kind of rip through that a little quickly and say, okay, this stuff's set aside. We got it. That's all it says. And then move on from there. See, so I think we need to go through these things first, which we okay. could do now or next week. Because again, think about there's things that, you know, use the freight, the pathways, for example. You know, I'm not even sure the structure of the plan works. 
And so I want to say, you know, if we're saying building electrification is one of the key pathways, and we all agree building electrification is one of the key pathways, then we should move things in various points in the plan under building electrification. So I, I hate editing when it, it may be just a formatting problem. Right, I wasn't saying to edit. I was basically just saying using the comments to identify where we seem to be in agreement. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we, I think we, I need we to do this first, and then yes, sure. that's absolutely yeah. to be the next step yeah. in the process. Right. I, I will say this is a problem if we meet every two weeks, it's not gonna happen in two weeks. I mean, this is, this is still a big project, so, so building this makes it, I think it makes it use our time more efficiently. Then I guess I'm, I'm still worried about, I mean, the description of, well, take the next six months to just only work on this plan. And I feel like we all wanna be involved with doing the second part of what you talked about, which was figuring out things that are that can be legislation, and think about things that can be uh, actionable policy. I just, I, I just, I'd hate to just kind of spend six months working on yeah. the plan. You know? so, yeah. I just want to respond quick. This may be my swan song here too. This may be my last meeting. What I would want as a counselor, and I will be a counselor, uh, God willing, the creek don't rise, I want an expression of urgency and emergency. I want uh, the message to lead beyond this committee that's transmitted to the council, that's transmitted to the public at large at the same time. I mean, basically, the thrust of most of our conversations coming up are probably going to be around an override. I want that same level of engagement, and I want the community to understand what this means as we try to do as Councilor Klein just suggested, if we're going to draft legislation, we need all people rowing the boat in the same direction. We need uh, community support as we start to bring forward legislation, as the mayor starts to propose policy. It, 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 we're talking about the persuasion part, the political will part. And so anything that comes out of this committee uh, that just sort of transmits merely that sense of, of well, uh, panic in some level, but not. I mean, the fact that we want to do something, that, that we will commit to something, that's enough for me right now. And then as we get granular, how do we do it? What do we do? What's it look like? What's it going to cost? How, how does it impact people? Those are, the, those are the things that we start to address as, we, as long as the conversation is engaged. Conversation is engaged here. It's engaged in other committees. Not so much in the broader community, except for on a, on a Facebook level. Yeah, that I want it to go a little deeper than that. I want people to understand it's at home and what it does. So whatever we, whatever this committee can convey or help an assistant convey, that, that's how it's This plan is going to be the vehicle that does what you're talking. Exactly. About. We it, it literally is thrown in, and we're debating. We'll be debating it on the floor, discussing it on the floor, uh, and hopefully the, the paper follows, the community follows. So. so then the version of this plan, if, if we're taking on our advocacy point of view and we want urgency, the version of this plan that we want to come forward from here should be the most urgent, the one with the most urgent language, the one that expresses what you just, just yeah, said. Yeah, it's more prosy, as Wayne said, and less, and less data. Yeah, which means that we don't necessarily need the details that the small group got into, right. because from the point of view of actually implementing something, it's the sense of urgency rather than the detail. Uh, just restating it exactly, so that we so we can focus on doing what's effective and not producing a document that we're proud of that doesn't get executed. Into exactly. Action. So that, that's exactly. why the visions exactly. are pathways and sort of the big picture actions are the, the key of assessment. Exactly. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Chris actually had his hand raised before I... Well, I'll, I'll give it a shot. All I was going to say is I, I think what you're trying to get to in the minutes left to actually work on the vision part. Well, I mean, we're not in minutes exactly. left, but you know, now the next meeting, I mean, what I'd like to now the next meeting is to finish vision and pathways, because that becomes the framework that everybody has. Right. Right. Regardless, I mean, either way, if we're spending six months and fleshing it out, or if we were spending two months and doing an urgent thing that goes to council, either way, we need the vision and pathways before the next. Right. So we don't really have to make some of these decisions for a little while. But right. right. to start right now. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. You, you were kind of trying to lead towards that. I just kind of want to put that out there as that it could be this next thing that we do. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I look forward to that and I hope we do it in just a minute. One second. Um, yeah. the, um, the
the way that I've done this in the private sector is when we have a deadline where we have to submit a 400 page proposal uh, is that we break it up and assign different people different things have them work on it and they have deadlines to produce the language that's required otherwise we fail um, so I would suggest that that approach would work to get this very large document done where we don't have to assign it necessarily but people could voluntarily go in and write the language for each of these sections that already exist the framework already exists which is the hard part those of us who care to can go in and rewrite entire sections and propose that as language for Wayne to have his staff incorporate and for Wayne and his staff to edit around the edges as they see fit and return to us to vote up or down. So let, let's think about that and ponder it and maybe put it on hold now And because I think we need that, that vision of framework at this level first because before we even assign that and then whether we do it collectively or staff does or break it down, I don't really care. But So let's, in, in that time that's left, let's sort of go through this um, and, and again, we don't need to reach agreement now, but is this, you know, we can identify what we need for. So starting with, with vision, um, we've sort of said there's four basic pieces. Obviously, the plan is about resilience and adaptation. The plan is about regeneration and mitigation. But all of this is um, that we want to be a thriving, equitable city. We don't, you know, we're not saying we're going to make have a horrible place. And we, and we want this, I think maybe the last one's actually the one that we're going to have the biggest disagreement on is the balance between aspirational and achievable. I'll just, I mean, I, I'd suggest that's the only one that even requires discussion. Am okay. I wrong about that? So for the first three, what are we missing? And I'm not, you know, this is a quick project, so if I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm not. I think mitigation should be first. Okay. Just a second. Yep. Actually, by that, did you did you mean like the order of the vision uh, above resilience or mm -hmm. mitigation and regeneration? So those around the other way around. Oh no, I meant it should be ahead of adaptation. Okay. Yes. Can you just define re regeneration real quick? I mean, regeneration yeah, I mean, so and regenerate ecological systems aside from the, the, the going back. The difference between just rate. using mitigation. Mitigation is sort of just about reducing your carbon footprint. And regeneration thinks about entire systems. And are the th systems that have to be done differently? I mean, not just reducing carbon. Maybe we're going to be negative and actually absorbing carbon, which is great. That may not be realistic. Mm -hmm. But also, lots of systems have already been damaged. You know, we know invasive plants are taking over the world in the space of insects. So, how do we sort of create a, a more balanced space? There's this whole, if you haven't seen it already, go to the Regeneration Project, which is one of the sort of biggest scientific things. So, it's often used. So, Exactly the same as mitigation, so I'm trying to put them together. System but it's so somewhat being more realistic, bringing back a system so that we can yes. adjust and adapt and also produce. Yes, exactly. Okay, so besides changing the order, and I'm not getting to the, the balance between achievable and aspirational, first three, missing anything? And you can come back with more comments next meeting. It's not going to get us off. Within the vision, like where is the bit about like the, the rationale, the emergency, the crisis that we have? To well, that's the pros. That, that, I, I don't want to do the pros. I think we no, need to I start know, with that. No, I know, but is it a? I think it's the first sentence. I think it's the first sentence. It's like the, the context. It's the context. context. The context. The first context. But yes, I, and you know, I'll make make a note. But pros, emergency. The why, right? Why are yeah. we doing It's the whereas. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead. And put it. I guess the way that it's laid out to me is a little bit mixing of apples and oranges. I think the, um, the concept of resilience and adaptation, the concepts of resilience and adaptation, regeneration and mitigation are all clearly what this plan is about. Um, but I think the goal of all of that is to make, uh, to do it with equitability in mind yep. and um, as a goal that the city will thrive. I don't think 
I mean, it is part of the vision, but the so way that it's broken line. down here, it, yep. it's okay. like something separate that needs to be achieved when that's the overarching kind yep. of concept behind everything that you're doing. Okay. Do so it'd be plan? drop, thrive, and I think the saving probably goes for thrive. So drop, thrive, and drop equitable and bring it into those first two things. Yeah, I always want to write yep. that yeah. just be into it. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. And almost like it's the, the why and the context that feeds into the, the goals for thriving and equitability yep. and then the, the nuts and bolts. Okay. I mean, it's simplistic, but could we, could we change, regenerate a, a sustainable community to create a, state, a sustainable community? Because, I mean, unfortunately, we don't. We didn't have a sustainable community in, um, since the pilgrims. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're not, you know, I mean, in, we're looking to have as little impact yep. on the environment as we did then. But it's, I mean, it's such a, such yep. a change. Yeah. Yeah. With all these big words like avoiding broad words like even sustainability, it's we're kind of beyond that. And it's like green building. It's like it doesn't mean anything anymore. Sustainability doesn't really. I mean, there's there's deep levels and tiers to it, but these other terms I think are, are stronger. Is that kind of what you're getting at? If there's uh, yeah, I mean, I was I, I was looking for a, you know something like three words, four words that we could that that we that people can just get a hold of. Okay. Imagine and you know you could somebody could paint a picture of it you know with flowers. Yeah, I I, I think to Louis's point, when you get jargony, it's great for singing in the choir, mm -hmm. but kill jargon, drown it move clear, precise language that uh, evokes and so as opposed to, uh, um, it, it, you know, for us it's not even jargon, I suppose, but definitely for you guys, but for, I, I think for the layperson, when you start throwing out these terms, it creates a shibboleth, mm -hmm. and that, that's not what we're looking for. Okay, so I, I think I have enough for the first step of sort of that make them cry. Do yeah. so in a way that to be equitable to address frontline communities in a way that's really unclear and well, understandable without this jargon. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think I don't want to worse but now, but I think I, I have the direction. Lily, All right. Lily has a comment to ask. If I heard that. What? Sure. Is that okay? I part of the vision and one might argue it's it's a pathway, but I think it's actually more a vision piece is the idea that as a community we self-measure and we self-evaluate. That gets to the metrics piece. It says that that's actually part of the vision. Part of the vision is that we're a constantly self-reflective, self-measuring, self-evaluating community. And that holds us to every single type of pathway or action is because that is part of our vision. Okay, good. But to be accountable, that there's within all this there's accountability. So that then it comes back to that is what's the balance, right? So so planning jargon we always talk about, you know, aspirational, achievable, ambitious, and accountable. Um, but everyone's gonna have different lines as what are those four A's and, and, and what you do. So um, and I you know I want to be careful because this is the area we would be most easy to have consensus fall apart because that is that balance. So I mean, everyone wants to be aspirational in some question, but do we want to be aspirational in things which we could achieve? I, I philosophically and technically, I believe that's not really an appropriate question. Could you say Every, a little it, Sorry, it's not even an appropriate question. In that, the aspirations, if we, if we say our aspirations have to do with, say, carbon neutrality by 2030, right, that is achievable. It may not be easy. It may take. Uh, it, it, it may it may require fi creative financing. It may require uh, rules that not everybody likes, and therefore it may turn out not to be achievable because we essentially didn't achieve it. But it's technically achievable. So if we start out by kind of presupposing that we know what's achievable and weakening our aspiration based on that, we're going to be, A, we're going to be wrong, and then, surprise, surprise, we, we won't achieve our aspiration. So I... We mean, what, I mean, it's possible we don't want to do dates. I, I think that's where the consensus is going to fall apart. I mean, I, I don't 
think economically, the community is going to invest the sort of money. I mean, you're right, it's technically feasible. But, but you, you, you um, don't think. As opposed to if, if, our, if our representatives get enough feedback and are able to start to so this is I want to make sure that language, because sometimes people talk about city operations versus the entire community. Mm -hmm. yeah. As the community, okay. there are so much sunk assets in heating plants and Portland city yeah. buildings, yep. I don't think it's technically possible. We're not, we, who said carbon neutral community wise by 2030? That's the mayor's pledge. By 2050. No, by 2050. Yeah. And that's the stuff people are challenging so in the process. And the question is, what is our more immediate goal to get? Right. We don't, we don't have anything right now for doing this. We're going we're gonna to end up drilling down to a point where we can we recommend that there's a, a just like a plastic bag and that you can't buy a light bulb that's more than 10 watts. You know, it's going to come down to some really basic things, and those are the things we're going to build. In, we're going to build one at a time to success, and we're going. It's going to be that uh, pragmatic. In I think, in terms of achieving a goal, it has to be. We're going to achieve a goal by doing one, two, three, four, five, six. Eight. Okay, so I think this is in the the hold box because we're not going to reach consensus today. I want to keep going through the, the piece. So but that idea that that's what that's something that's going to back up a lot of the stuff we're working at at the top, and that's that's we can reach a consensus because in the end I think we will um, be able to um, we'll say we're going to do this and then we'll, we'll work on how we're going to do it. Right, so two more minutes on this I'm going to go on we can come back to this next week. Chris. So I kind of want to, you know, if the vision, two ways of looking at vision, you know, you know, one way of looking at vision is you put a stake in the ground and that's where you want to be. And so anything you do, you decide is that going to get me there is that going to be a, a step that's going to end up with me there you know it's not it, the other way is this you know vision of moving in that direction and I think it's more important to put a stake in the ground and say this is where I want to be like you say Wayne it doesn't really have a time frame to it then. It's, it's basically that's where I want to be and every decision needs to be <clears throat> needs to be aimed at getting me there without really putting a time frame on it which then becomes a a process of steps. Right. So if we don't do a time frame, I don't I think we're not gonna have a problem reaching consensus. It's yeah. the time frame we start losing it. Uh, I I would uh, I'd like to say two different things. One, uh, I, I completely agree that it is technically feasible and it is financially and I, I will tell you it is financially feasible because of uh, the fact that uh, the cost of production and uh, of renewable production and storage right now are significantly higher than they will be in five to six years and we need to see this as a bell curve and not as a straight linear progression and what will happen is that if we properly plan for the next three to five years it will only take us three to five years to execute uh, if we are able to properly financially incentivize the behavior which we need to happen and we can find alternative financing solutions to leverage for the city uh, to get us a lot closer than we are right now and then uh, we can work with the utility companies to complete the package by 2030. I know we can and that is why I am going to uh, make a motion that we propose to the mayor that a technical subgroup be com uh, commissioned by him uh, and that that technical working group would be tasked with the execution of this plan by the date that we eventually agree on. I'd like, I'd like, I'd like, I'd like just to, like to make that motion. I do not know how, well, but I did. Am, I so just did. Did so you say second? There's a motion on the table. I'll all second for purposes of discussion. I thought, I thought the mayor said that. I, I thought the agent said that we could have subcommittees not subcommittees. This would be, I, I, from what I understand, or will correct me, but what he's proposing is the mayor would appoint a subgroup, but then that would, they would have to abide by all the open meeting law issues that would report to the mayor, not to the how is a subgroup responsible for holding a city accountable? Because there are technical issues that city staff may not understand, and that I know that Ben and myself 
could lend the technical expertise to the city to actually do this. I know how to make this happen. I, I could get us there by 2030. I'm very comfortable with that. How about bringing a report next week? I mean, next meeting and lay it on the table. There. I mean, I, I feel like you just said something that's a little unrealistic. I guess I'd like to, I like that. Um, um, uh, Gordon, you know, in a way I would, I think 15 years ago, I might have been making the same kind of statement. And, you know, the cost of renewables is going down, the cost of battery storage is going down, technologies are improving, but it's not in isolation. I mean, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, what is it? Fracking happened. So the same time that we're improving economics for renewables, fossil fuels are improving their economics too. And there's no guarantee that it's gonna be, you know, given just plain economic out there that renewables are gonna win. You, you can't count on that. That's not uh, go down that. It, 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 it is, I, 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 I disagree with that. I, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, sorry. so, uh, and um, the, the motion actually, it wasn't a point on the agenda, it is a little off track. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, you know, for the purpose of the finishing the discussion, rather than go to a vote is that I think uh, take that under advisement something to follow up on the, on uh, a subsequent meeting. But. I, I think that rather than um, I wonder if you would consider attracting that as a motion and building that into the plan as a suggestion yeah. because that gives us more space as a group to question. continue to talk about it and um, figure out if it's something that we really want as part of the plan. That's a great idea. Okay. Okay. So okay. the motion is for trial. Okay. So we'll come back to aspirational geo. It's only an issue we have to resolve. But just in the 15 minutes we have left, start with pathways. I, both, I particularly want to know are we missing a major pathway? Um, we, you know, we can find the pathway for the next meeting, but what's not, it's not as hard to comment on what's not here. So what are we, what are we missing? Uh, I would say, in, uh, Building energy efficiency, we want to make sure that is water efficiency addressed somewhere in here. Uh, only as relates to energy, so building thermal and other energy loads. Uh, so I would, and then I would, process further down process, which is for the city's water yeah. system. Okay, I would suggest that we add uh, water conservation uh, somewhere in here as one of the pathways. Okay. Under consumption. Yeah. Or that might be under process because that's where water and sewer is, you know, less water used, the less treatment. In that same section, I think we should also um, specifically have something about reducing waste. You have waste resources, but I think waste reduction is a yep. primary goal is important. Yeah. I would request that we add a pathway which would be uh, the exploration of third party financed uh, vehicles to achieve energy conservation and infrastructure improvements. But that's that's not a pathway as this is just de defined, that's just a, uh, a, a mode of financing right. whatever one of these things. Do. Well, I think that it would uh, allow us to take a closer look as a group at what the options for how do you actually fund this kind of work are, avail what options are available for financing the work that we want yeah. to do here. I think that's a critical thing that we But wouldn't you do that for every single one of these? Yeah, um, but otherwise the entire plan. That's a tool. That's a, that's, yeah. yeah, financing is the crux of every issue that we're going to have. So I think uh, that covers every square inch of this piece of paper. So maybe at the high yeah. level, if yeah. substantive action is just going to be high level things, it's right. financing for pace and vehicles, right. et cetera. What is smaller square footage per use? So this is a matter of, you know, no matter how cons we can start a building, we convince people to have smaller homes, we convince people to have smaller offices, they consume less. Related to that point, small I cars. I wonder if we need to spell out community education and activation as a pathway because all of this needs mm -hmm. to be kind of yep. supported by and undergirded by this yep. idea of really educating the public, but more, more than that, even activating people. Yeah, okay. 
doesn't isn't that like the financing thing as a cross cutting, a, a cross -cutting mo mode of operation that has to apply to everything? Yeah. Yeah, there's actually a particular. Actually, actually, you've got your hand up. Yeah. Yes. Before uh, I jump on your hand up. Okay. Um, so uh, just a few things. The I don't know if we're sticking with these titles, but mobil uh, mobility energy loads seems kind of narrowly defined. If there's a lot more to than the energy loads, so I would the third pathway. Mm -hmm. So what do you think it should be? Just yeah, mobility. or mobility and transportation. Okay. I, I, I guess it's just a lot more than the energy loads. Yeah, okay. Right? And, and, um, my comments are mostly about how this is organized. Like food waste, I, I, I think belongs in the consumption. It's dealt with as a, a yep. waste. Okay. And, and then similarly with the trees and forests, carbon sequestration is one really important element of that, but there's also a lot of land use and shady and other benefits are more, more appropriate up in land use or well, there's also the know, there's resilience and adaptation side where these things overlap. Right, right. I think so. I do oh, down remember. here. Okay. Right. Just I do remember there being something in the plan about education, which I thought was very substantial and important, but I don't see reflected in here. I think that was brought up a moment ago. That would be like high education. So where, where are you seeing that? Well, Could you speak up a little? I'm sorry. Yeah. It, it, so education, just like financing, just like uh, incentives, is something that has to be applied to every single category. Maybe all of this falls under substantive actions because right. a high impact yeah. practice might be an educational. Uh, Would you so apply that as well to Smith Folk? Like we, we here we have uh, this incredible opportunity to educate our next generation of vocational workers who are going we're going to need uh, in order to make the energy. So, so, so because when I have ten so, minutes left. I, I sort of do this now as a brainstorming going through everything, then we're rewarding you another chance of discussing it. So just throw out your ideas and I'll write them down instead of getting a debate for each one. I wonder if behavior should be fit in this. I mean, that idea you said about changing people's actions and, and values for smaller square footage per use. Yeah. It seems like behavioral choices and I think it's also cross cutting. Yep. Um, consumption and everything. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say with the activation, mm -hmm. kind of community yeah. education yeah. and activation. Yeah. I wonder if this that concept, since it is so overarching, needs to be under vision instead. Okay. This, you know, behavior change or community yeah. education. Behavior Cult change. Culture shift. Culture, culture shift. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So I know this is another one of those substantive action cuts made across. Yeah. But um, I think uh, the way our municipal government is actually set up should be consider you know mm -hmm. what is, what is the best way to set up our government structure to make sure this is enacted mm -hmm. and just, yeah. um, I'm sorry. I just want to, to throw in the idea that transportation is not only a mobility uh, energy load but also ought to show up in uh, the resilience and adaptation side mm -hmm. people need ways to get around preferably without cars mm -hmm. <laughs> yep it should be heat and cooling or space conditioning, not just heat. Yeah, sure. Where are you going, sir? Uh, pathways of resilience adaptation just have heat, but it's also cooling maybe more of a concern. Mm. Yeah, okay. What about this? Is there something here about um, building coke stuff? Well, he says energy conservation. Right, the building code to me would be the actions, the category, the pathways, this conservation. I mean, just this thermal. But regulation. Yeah, you know, like, you know, yeah, broad pathways. So as we keep going down, this is the action. You're doing well here. Um, I would like to bring up one thing before we run out of time. I really agreed with Lily's suggestions that we make these meetings longer. They are not long enough. We've run up against the end of it every single time I've been here. And I think that extending it by half an hour would really let these meetings for you. I wonder if everyone is in agreement with me or if we might try to find
consensus on that thought tonight, as well as the idea that I think that we don't need often enough to achieve the amount of work that we have put in front of us, and that we should make this twice a month instead of once. So this is the the open meeting and all stuff. I think it's a good discussion, but let's do it and put it on the agenda. Yeah, on the next agenda. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We have eight minutes. So something like economic development, we can look at that as, as a pathway. Yeah. We can also look at that as an action program as a result of that pathway. So where would that be tagged in? And then we can also look at you know at the bottom where it's talking about land use regulatory and plans that's going to encourage and be used to encourage yep. changes in economic development uh, but if we're going to be talking about you know things such as uh, changes in agricultural practices flooding along the river uh, and resulting economic development changes um, is that an act is it a pathway or is it a result of Okay. Is it so development or thought. impacts? I'm sorry. Is it is it development or is it impacts or mitigation? Like economic well. mitigation. We could use economic development to deal with mitigation, but we can also it can be a result of adaptation and encouraging different economic development patterns. Mm -hmm. Yep. New opportunities. Yep. Being young. And you said food for thought. I think the line's not exactly. You know, some things can be more than right. one, so we can talk and figure that out. Okay. Other big picture comments in the process. Okay, so the next meeting I'm basically going to take, again, I'm not going to touch the plan between now and the next meeting, um, and basically sort of try to revise this, flesh out a little bit, but see if we can move forward in the consensus. Um, spend some time on the whole achievable aspirational, because that may be the area that's, I mean, and maybe we can reach agreement and everything else, and that's what we spend a, a substantial amount of time. Um, when, when's the next meeting scheduled? Well, normally it's the second Thursday of every month. So, is that, I mean, if we're talking, was that? January 9th. January 9th, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, as a practical matter, I know we're going to talk next week about how often we meet, the next meeting, I doubt people want to meet like on Christmas Day. Okay. So, probably <laughs> January 9th is the next meeting, and then we can then figure out, do we have meetings in January? Um, I think if you were really committed, you'd meet on Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jewish. Yeah, it's just all the Jewish members. <laughs> Chinese food. Yeah. It's the day after Christmas. The day after Christmas. Yeah, it's Boxing Day. We can, <laughs> we can throw on the gloves. <laughs> oh, is that not that? It's not that. It's not that. By your next meeting, you just. We'll probably, I'm not sure if the committee assignments will already be done for the counselors by then, so mm -hmm. maybe these two seats may be empty. So, okay. okay, you guys elect a council president and then you do the assignments yeah. like that? Okay, yeah. the, the, that poor person has to set the Thanksgiving table, as it were. So, yeah, so there's, yeah, so there's, there's a bit of a lag kind of there. We don't get inaugurated until the sixth, okay. So. Okay, this has been incredibly helpful. Um, actually, want to adjourn a couple minutes early because I have a 5.30 meeting and because people waiting to come, come into the Bob's here. Um, hey, Bob. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Thank you for coming.